one of the scents in the wings to awakening, are the factors for awakening. There are seven of them altogether. Start with mindfulness as a factor for awakening. Then there's analysis of qualities, persistence or energy, rapture, tranquility or serenity, concentration, and equanimity. Of the factors, the Buddha said mindfulness is the one that's always appropriate. Mindfulness here means both mindfulness and alertness. Mindfulness is the ability to keep something in mind. Like right now, you're trying to keep the breath in mind. And then there's alertness, watching what the breath is doing, and watching how the mind is relating to the breath. These two qualities, the Buddha said, are always appropriate. They're always skillful. And then he goes on to describe how the rest of the factors for awakening depend on the situation. Three of them are energizing. Analysis of qualities, which is trying to figure out what exactly is skillful, what is unskillful, seeing things in terms of cause and effect, particularly seeing things, what you're doing in terms of cause and effect in the mind. And then there's persistence, which tries to nurture the skillful qualities and get rid of the unskillful ones. But it also carries the, the sense of putting an effort into the practice when effort is needed. And then there's rapture, the sense of fullness that can come as the mind begins to settle down. In a skillful way. These are energizing. And as the Buddha said, if, if you find that you're already hyper as you come to the meditation, you may not want these qualities. But if you feel that there's a lack of energy in your practice, these are the ones you want to focus on. In other words, look and see what exactly in your mind when you're feeling maybe lazy or just tired. What exactly is there in the mind that it is skillful? What potentials for skillfulness are there in the mind? What can you focus on that will give rise to energy? Sometimes this means moving your focus around. If you find that just focusing on one spot in the body tends to make you sleepy, move it around. Or if the breath seems too light to focus on, make it heavier. In other words, you actively work with what you've got. Try to figure things out. And that gives, to a, gives rise to a sense of Rapture, refreshment, wakes you up. Then there are the other three qualities, serenity, concentration, equanimity. And as the Buddha said, when your energy level is low, you don't want to focus on these. So that it's like you've got a fire that's beginning to go out and you want to keep it going. But instead of keeping it going, you just pour a lot of ashes on top of it, and that puts it out totally. These qualities are useful for when you're feeling hyper. There's too much energy in the mind. Try to calm things down. Do what you can to calm the breathing. Do what you can to just stay in one spot, despite the, the temptation to keep moving around. And in here, the factor that makes a difference in the mind is just the ability to watch over things. That's equanimity. There's another sutta where the Buddha talks about two ways of dealing with unskillful qualities in the mind. One is to actively work against them and to promote skillful qualities in their stead, and the other is just to watch. Some unskillful qualities will go away simply as you watch them. They've been able to take hold of the mind because you haven't been paying attention. But if you watch things with a steady gaze and don't react, that can take care of some unskillful qualities that arise in the mind. So the trick, of course, lies in seeing what state your mind is in and which are the qualities you need to emphasize. 
This is where another quality associated with the factors for awakening comes in. It's called appropriate attention. Looking at things in terms of cause and effect. Noticing okay, what you're doing that's causing stress in the mind and what you're doing that's helping to alleviate the stress. Which factors of the path are working and which ones are not. In other words, it's mindfulness combined with appropriate attention that allows you to look at the mind and figure out what needs to be done. So these two qualities are always essential. Mindfulness watches what keeps something in mind. Alertness watches what's going on, and appropriate attention is what gives you a sense of what needs to be done. Mindfulness on its own doesn't know anything. What it should be mindful of and what it shouldn't be mindful of. It's just a quality of the mind keeps something in mind. You need to have a sense of the overall picture of what we're working on here. So that you can know what to be alert to, what to keep in mind. Keep remembering that the issue is the fact that there's stress and suffering in life, and not only that there is stress and suffering, but the stress and suffering that causes from, comes from craving is really placing a burden on the mind. That's what you've got to focus on. And then there's a way to put an end to the craving. That's the Noble Eightfold Path. For the concentration factors being right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration. These are the things you want to keep in mind as you're watching the breath, as you're paying attention to what's going on in the present moment. We're not here just as observers. We've got an agenda. Remember that. It's many times mindfulness is presented as being totally neutral. Practice. Well, mindfulness itself is neutral, but what you're doing with it is not neutral. There's always a framework, and it's good to be clear on what that framework is, because otherwise mindfulness gets pushed off in different directions. So always keep in mind the fact that we're here to deal with the issue of suffering, to see what we can do to put an end to suffering. And the important causes are right here in the mind. And so from that perspective, then you can look at the other factors for awakening, see what's appropriate right now. Is your mind suffering from too much energy or too little energy? Would it benefit from actively working to promote skillful qualities, or actively to snuff out unskillful ones, or would it benefit more from just watching? This requires a sense of just right. An ability to watch things in terms of cause and effect, to see what's working. As the Buddha said, sometimes when we're practicing, we can practice as we like, live at our ease, and the practice is working. It's fine. But there are other times when we live at our ease and the practice doesn't work. The mind starts wandering into areas it shouldn't go. Like the monkey in the, the analogy, it wanders off into this area where hunters also go. The hunters have left out little tar traps. The monkey goes wandering in, it gets interested in the tar trap, and ends up getting stuck. And the more it tries to pull away, the more stuck it gets. So if you find that living at your ease leads the mind to start wandering around in unskillful areas, that means you've got to make things a little bit more difficult for yourself. This is why we have the ascetic practices. This is why we have late night sits. This is where the element of making a vow in your meditation, promising yourself that you're going to sit longer than you normally would, or you're going to walk, do a walking meditation more than you normally would, or stay up later than you normally would.
as a way of putting heat to the defilements. So this ability to see what's working and what's not working is really essential to the practice. It requires a lot of honesty. And as the Buddha said, that's the main quality he was looking for in a student, was that the student be honest. If the student is honest, observant, then you can work with that student. The student can be trained, you can be rely on the student and notice what needs to be done, in effect to become his or her own teacher. So value the quality of honesty in your mind as you watch what's working and what's not working in your practice. And always work to keep these qualities going, the mindfulness and alertness together with that appropriate attention. That's what enables you to read the situation and offers ideas as to what might be the best way to approach whatever the situation may be. So skillfulness is not just a matter of knowing what qualities are skillful, but also knowing which ones are needed right now and to what, and to what extent. As the Buddha points out in his discussion of the four bases for success, Okay, desire, if it's too strong or too weak, can actually become unskillful. If it's just right, it's part of the path. The same way with persistence, intentness, and your powers of analysis. If they get too carried away, they actually become unskillful. If they're too weak, they're unskillful. Skill lies in knowing what's just right. And just right can also change with the situation, change with the state of your mind, change with the state of your body. It means you have to be on top of events. That's what the mindfulness and alertness are for. So these are the main points to keep in mind. Once you keep them in mind, then you know the other tools that you can have at your hands. Okay, then you can apply the right tool for whatever the job needs to be done. That's right effort.